Today, our reflection is from the surah we were reciting, Surah Al Anfal. In the beginning, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in verse number two Innam al Mu'minun al Ladina ida dhukir Allahu wajilat kulubuhum wa ida tuliyata alayhim ayatuhu zadatum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakalun. It's a beautiful verse where Allah describes the real believers. Innam al Mu'minun, verily the believers are those with the following qualities. Alladina ida dhukir Allah, those who when Allah is mentioned, Allah's name is mentioned, wajilat kulubuhum, their hearts begin to shake. Wajilat or wajil in Arabic is when your heart trembles, when your heart shakes. So they are affected emotionally when Allah's name is remembered. Alladina ida dhukir Allah, wajilat kulubuhum. And وَإِذَا تُلِيَتَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ And when Allah's verses are recited, زَادَتْهُمْ imana, Their iman goes even higher. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And upon Allah, they place their trust. They put their complete trust, tawakkul, in Allah. So in, these, in this beautiful verse, Allah describes believers who have the emotional connection. Whenever Allah's name is mentioned, it doesn't just come into one ear and out the other. It's not just an academic exercise for them. It's not just information. But when Allah is really mentioned, it affects their hearts. Their hearts begin to shake. Some of the Mufassirin wrote that this means that there is fear. So they say when someone's about to commit a sin and someone reminds, another person reminds them of Allah, then immediately their heart shakes out of fear and they stop doing what they're doing. So this is one application, it's certainly true. But I believe that love is a more powerful emotion than fear. And when you read the entire verse together, it's probably describing something more powerful than just fear. It's really a veneration and awe that might have an element of fear in it, but it has an element of love. Whenever Allah is mentioned, their heart skips a beat. So this is you know, when people are in love, you know, affects your heart. When you experience any type of extreme emotion, even tragedy, when you experience the loss of a parent, something really profound, you know, it, it affects you here. You actually feel your heart. You feel your heart either beating very fast or skipping a beat, or you just feel a pressure here. You feel all, all sorts of emotions right here in your chest. And that's what wajilat kulubuhum is. So these believers, their heart trembles when Allah's name is remembered. And when Allah's verses are recited to them, their iman goes higher and higher. What does that mean? Also means that they understand Allah's verses, they understand the meaning, they're reflecting over it and it affects them. And as a result, their iman goes higher. And in the end, they put their trust in Allah, tawakkul. Tawakkul is an important quality of iman, of believers. Tawakkul is where you place your trust, where you, it's kind of like giving up. You give up your own efforts, you give up your own struggles, you give up your own expectations, and you put everything in Allah Azza wa That's what the complete tawakkul is. It's like putting all your eggs in one basket, there's an expression. But you do that with Allah Azza wa You put all your hopes and expectations and, 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 and trust in Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah said, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ those who establish the prayers and those who spend from what we have given them. But at the end, Allah says, Ula'ika humul mu'minuna haqqa. These are the real believers. So these are the qualities of real believers. And that's why Allah uses this kind of expression here. He doesn't usually use an expression like that. Ula'ika humul mu'minuna haqqa. Lahum darajatun inda rabbihim wa maghfiratun wa rizqun kareem. They have uh, stations with Allah high degrees with Allah Azza, with their Lord. They have forgiveness from their Lord and they have great sustenance, noble sustenance from their Lord. This is a powerful series of verses, just three verses. But I wanted to just share the message of the first one because it's teaching us that belief is has to be from the heart. It has to have this, this emotional connection. This is spirituality. 
So this is what real belief is. There has to be the spiritual connection. It's not just an academic reading of tafsir, not just a reading of, of translation where you're memorizing information, but it's, it's an emotional connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's interesting, this is verse number two. I shared with you that this is verse number, verse number two gives you a spiritual outline or an outline of what belief is or what believers are. The first quality is a highly spiritual quality. So what, what is verse number one in Surah Al-Anfal? Who remembers Surah Al-Anfal? Verse number one, how does it begin? No, it doesn't begin with Alhamdulillah. Um, it's Surah Al-Anfal begins with the title, right? Anfal. So something with Anfal. Anyone remember? Yes, Aluna Kaani Anfal. So the verse begins, the surah begins actually. They ask you about Anfal, and Anfal are the spoils of war. So this has nothing to do with spirituality. But the first verse is about war, military expedition. And it was revealed in the aftermath of the Battle of Badr, where after the victory of the Muslims in Badr, um, some of the companions who were weak of faith, they began to almost argue over all the spoils and the riches that were before them. So the Prophet began to distribute and people came and they said, oh, don't forget us, um, you promised us. And so all this, this love of dunya began to like uh, creep into the equation. And you know there began to be disputes and some companions were disputing over the spoils of war. So Allah revealed this verse. Yes, anfal. They ask you about the spoils of war. Say to them that, so the answer comes, and this is an answer of what you're supposed to do in battle for the believers. The spoils of war belong to Allah and His Messenger. Allah remind them, look, fear Allah and mend the relations between yourselves. And then he says, Obey Allah and His Messenger if you are really believers. So it's interesting, the whole situation has to do with this world. Spoils of war, that's, that's gold and glitter, that's material blessings. And it has to do with war and military expeditions. If you were to think, okay, I need a spiritual verse today. I want to know how to revive my heart and you were to be told this is a surah about battle, you would never come to that surah for this kind of verse. But Allah teaches in His way. He knows how to give instruction and He knows the best remedy for materialism, the best remedy for this attachment to dunya, this type of idea, and we'll find it in our situations and communities. Whenever you find in your community excessive attachment to worldly life or materialism, the best remedy is to connect them with Allah in a spiritual way. <laughs> remind them of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you remind them of Allah, their hearts should tremble. They should shake out of extreme emotion. And when they recite the verses, their iman should increase. This is how the majalis of the companions were in, in the time of the Prophet wasallam. The famous hadith of Irbad ibn Sariya. Not going to share the hadith, but it begins it's in the Arba'in. Um, you know, they said one one night the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, So they said that one day the Prophet gave an address, a khitab in the masjid, and it's something affected our hearts. Our hearts began to shake. And our ears, uh, our eyes began to tremble and uh, sh shed tears. They became moist. So this is the same quality. It's an important quality. Allah shares that throughout the Quran. And this idea when you recite Quran, your iman should increase. So this is the kind of relationship we need to have with the Quran. This is only this can only come when you have that reverence for Allah, when you know what the Quran is, when you know who is coming from. And when your heart is attached and your heart is pure, as we shared uh, in previous lessons, and it can only come when you understand Quran, when you reflect over Quran, when you have that personal attachment. May Allah give us that personal attachment with Quran. May give us hearts that tremble out of the, uh, out of the remembrance of Allah and hearts that understand the verses of Quran and increase in faith.
اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مفتونين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم